The iPadOS 26 public beta is finally here after a long wait. For those of us who wanted to try the new features announced at WWDC, but didn't want to have to suffer through the developer betas. There are lots of new features in this release, but in this video, I want to quickly go over the top seven features that I found to be the most impactful over the month or so I've been using iPadOS 26. If you're watching this, I'm assuming you found your way to beta.apple.com to sign up for the public beta. But if you haven't, I'll put a link in the description to instructions on slatepad.org that can walk you through getting set up with the iPadOS beta. It's pretty likely that the main reason you even want to try the iPadOS public beta is for the new multitasking and new windowing. Multitasking gets a major overhaul in iPadOS 26, and this time, every iPad that runs the release gets to come along for the ride. If your iPad runs iPadOS 26, you now have access to free-floating, resizable windows, either via Stage Manager or through the new Windowed Apps mode. Before this update, windowing via Stage Manager required some getting used to. You kind of had to adapt to it, which to me was fine because it's a different platform, different platforms, different ways of doing different things. But now for the first time, windowing on iPad works pretty much just like a Mac or Windows user would expect. You can freely resize windows. You can open multiple windows of different apps if they allow it. You can put the windows wherever you want. You can tile them using window tiling via the stoplight buttons in the upper left corner. As you're using the iPad and as you're working, it becomes a really natural and fluid experience. You've no doubt heard by now about the new design coming to pretty much all of Apple's platforms this year. And you'll naturally see this across the entire system as you're using your iPad. What I found interesting about it is that you don't really feel liquid glass as much as you think you do. And, and you get used to it really quickly. See, on a smaller device like an iPhone or even the iPad mini, liquid glass is a bit more in your face. But on the larger devices where your content is taking up most of the view, it's easy to kind of forget it's there. Where liquid glass really jumps out is on places like the lock screen, which has this cool effect along the edge as you slide down or in menus where menus fluidly morph out of controls and then morph back when you're done. It's pretty cool. If you really want liquid glass in your face, you can try the new clear home screen option. Initially, I thought this looked tacky, but it's one of those things that you really have to try yourself on your own device and you might find that you like it more than you would think just based off the screenshots on Apple's website. I'm probably still not going to be using it, but I actually don't hate it and maybe you won't either. Let me know down in the comments. I have to admit, I was pretty skeptical when I heard the rumors that iPadOS was getting a menu bar like the Mac. It didn't really make any sense to me. But after having access to it over the past month, it kind of grows on you. It doesn't feel 100% natural yet, and I do feel like it's too small, but I am starting to see the benefits. With a simple swipe from the top of the screen, or by moving a cursor to the top of the screen, every app presents its own menu bar where you're able to access different commands that would have been hidden before on the keyboard shortcut menu that showed up when you held the command button on your hardware keyboard. All of that functionality is now easily exposed and quickly accessible from the menu bar. Now this one's hard for me because even after a month, I still miss the old iPad OS cursor. I know there are a lot of people who didn't care for it because it wasn't a pointer, but it just had so much character and it was so unique. Unfortunately, we don't always get what we want in this world. And that fun cursor has been replaced with the more traditional arrow shaped pointer. It no longer playfully morphs as it gets near elements. And according to Apple, it's more precise. I will be filing feedback suggesting that there be an option to enable the old cursor for those of us who really liked it. There's now system level control for recording your own audio and video while you're on a conference call or a video call. You access the local capture option in Control Center. So go ahead and tap the Add a Control button and search for local capture. When you tap on it, you'll be prompted to select where you want to store the final output. For me, I can only select downloads for some reason, but I'll assume that will change in the future. When the recording is complete, you'll find the output in the Files app where you can send it to whoever needs it. There are four new system apps that will come along with iPadOS 26. There's the Games app, which serves as a hub for your games and gaming related experiences, like all the stuff Game Center does. There's the Preview app, 
which consolidates all of the PDF editing capabilities that used to be in the Files app, but will now be more visible in the dedicated Preview app. There's the Journal app, which a lot of people have been requesting since the app came out on the iPhone a couple years ago. And of course, it has Apple Pencil support, as you'd expect. And my personal favorite, the Phone app. The iPad is finally the big iPhone that all the haters have been saying it is. But seriously, the Phone app makes the calling experience so much better. Before it felt like an afterthought. Now it feels like someone's actually thought this out. And if you're like me and use your iPad more than your iPhone, this removes a lot of friction from something you may do several times a day. You have access to voicemail and many of the calling features on iPhone like hold assist and contact posters. Just like on macOS, you can now drag folders from the Files app into the dock and have rapid access to their contents. And if that wasn't enough, you can choose between both the fan style and grid style for displaying the folder contents. And if you're using the fan style, you can actually swipe along the list of files to scroll what's in that folder. It's actually kind of fun just to do. That's just seven of the many new features in iPadOS 26. One thing to keep in mind as you're going through the beta and exploring is that as part of the beta install, you should have access to the feedback app. And that app is important because it lets you report bugs you find in the beta, as well as make feature requests to Apple if something doesn't work the way you think it should or the way you want it to. It's important to file feedback because the more people that request something, the more likely Apple is to address it. That's gonna do it for this video. Enjoy the public beta. iPadOS 26 is absolutely transformative for the iPad, and it's fun to be able to use it early. If you like this video, please make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel for more iPad-related content, and I will catch you all in the next one. Take care.